Please, don't be mad at me. It's not my fault. Trigger warning. All right, my friends, today we are talking about the Advance Paris A10 classic. Not the A10 Warthog. I have to admit that when I hear A and 10 put together, it gives me the warm and fuzzy feelings inside. I saw this at Expona and I was immediately intrigued because it looks like a Macintosh, almost unapologetically so. I wouldn't call this a clone of a Macintosh, but you'd need to have a screw loose not to see the similarities. The A10 Classic comes in at $2,500. Please don't shoot the messenger because if you really wanna think about it, this is kind of a cheap version of a Mac. That's like getting something 75% off. And I'm sure the folks from Advanced Paris are watching this now and they probably don't like me saying it looks like a Mac, but it looks like a Mac, come on. And that's kind of why I love it. Specifications, there are a ton of them. Two times 130 watts RMS for eight ohm speakers. Two times 190 watts RMS. For four ohm loads, I'll put a link in the description to the website, so if you want more specifications, go check it out and read it. But specs usually don't matter. That's why I like to listen to things. When I was told the price of this $2,500, I'm looking at it at Expona in Chicago. Let me paint a picture for you. Dimly lit room here, let's see if we can do it. Dimly lit room, blue glowing VU meters, wonderful sounds coming from this amplifier. And I legitimately thought this thing was gonna be eight grand, 10 grand. When he said $2,500, you get that craziness when you go to an audio show and you've seen so many things that are like 10, 20, 15,000. And then you hear 2,500 and you're like, well, this is a deal. So I asked him if they'd send me one and they did. Let's turn the light back on. Bloop. I redid my office. Look how pretty it is. Yay. I spent days in here decluttering and getting stuff out. Check it out though. It's really cool. On the back, prepare yourselves because this is going to take a while. At the top, you have an HDMI in and an arc input, two trigger outs, a USB, five volt output, which means you can hook up a Weem and power it from the A10 Classic. <laughs> Full size USB input. One, two, three optical inputs. One digital coaxial in. So if I'm doing my math correctly, for digital inputs alone, two HDMIs, three opticals, that's five, one coaxial, so that's six. The next side, there's a wireless digital module. I have no idea what that's for. Let's talk about analog inputs. One, two, three, four, five regular analog inputs. So four aux, one CD, one phono input. Pulling out the calculator again. Six total inputs. One's a phono though. Two subwoofer outputs. Also a class A bias switch on the back. And you have four sets of binding posts. If you're running A and B speakers, so if you're running four speakers all at the same time, impedance is supposed to be between eight and 16. Also one balanced input. Outside of a home theater receiver, this is the most inputs I've ever seen on an integrated amplifier. It also has amp in, preamp out, and a record out just in case you need it. So the elephant in the room on this amplifier is how it looks. It looks amazing. It looks vintage. It looks new. It looks sleek. Got a remote control. Yeah, sleek. The, the one thing I will say about this is the remote control doesn't feel quite as premium as the actual amplifier itself. I better turn this down. I'm Get a copyright strike. System of the down. Fantastic band. We can go over the remote real quick. This looks to be a CD and amplifier remote. Bass tone controls balance left and right, which is useful for me. Treble tone controls. 
a bypass, which I think bypasses the tone controls, puts it in like pure direct, direct mode. And then a dim and a loudness. Anyway, you can use that to dim the LEDs and the VU meters. But why would you want to do that? The reason you're buying this is to see those beautiful blue VU meters. This is kind of black and blue though. Very simple on the front. You got a knob. That knob can be used to navigate the settings and the menu. Then a big chunky power button on the left and a headphone output. A Little bit of old, a little bit of new. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it has tubes. I know many people enjoy listening to tubes even though they're wrong, but this is the first time that I've listened to tubes and I enjoyed it. Not exactly sure what type of tubes. I don't particularly feel the need to change them out. Why? Because it sounds good. So moving forward, at the end of each video, I'm gonna say whether I would buy it or not buy it. I think that'll be a lot of fun for everybody. It will be for me. So I listened to this a variety of ways. With the internal DAC, with an external DAC, with the internal phono preamp, with an external phono preamp, with a Q Acoustics 5040 hooked up, with the PMC Prodigy Ones hooked up, which are currently hooked up, Wharfdale Linton also hooked up. The easiest way to describe this amplifier is lively. Like my parents after my mom has had one too many glasses of wine. <laughs> Feisty. It's not tonally dark and it's not tonally thin, which just means a lack of bass in my opinion, that a lot of audiophile amplifiers, they sound like that. They sound thin. Everybody says they're so great. But now when you listen to some ACDC, Metallica, Eminem, White Zombie, no, you need a little gumption on the bottom end. This amp, right away, as soon as I turned it on, gumption, sparkle, clarity, energy, lively. It's a lively amplifier. Really woke up the Q Acoustics 5040s. And for me, this is another reason to maybe have an amplifier that has a little bit of juice on tap. I get it, not everybody can afford an amplifier that has a ton of wattage, especially AB, especially with a class A bias. But I've noticed, especially at lower levels when listening, that an amp that has some juice, some current, really, I probably should be saying an amp that has a lot of current or current capabilities, seems to be able to move that woofer more easily even at really low power levels. And the cool thing is, if you wanna check your power levels, the only thing you have to do is look at the front. With the internal DAC, let's just get this out of the way. I compared it to the Gishelli Labs J2 AKM 4499 version with the Sparkos op amp upgrades. And the J2 was better. I think there's a 9018, a Sabre 9018 DAC chip inside, which is an older DAC, but it still works. I was about to clear them. The internal DAC is great. And I didn't really feel like I was missing anything. Is there better DACs? Yes, absolutely. The J2 is a better DAC. But don't think for one moment that listening to the internal DAC on the A10 Classic was pulling me out of the music, me wanting something extra. Quite the opposite. The moment I started listening to this amplifier, I didn't want to stop listening. You can chalk it up to how good it sounds, but I think you can chalk it mostly up to how beautiful it looks. There's a certain part for me where I start to go from performance-based only. So complete ugly duckling, but if it performs really well, I don't care. When you start to get north of $1,000, looks start to be more important to me. And frankly, the only reason that I have this in my house is because it was so striking. And I felt like I could frame this up as being like a everyman Macintosh. The phono input, I compared it to a $500 phono stage from Rotel. That's not right, Project. Project, two box S2. This is a $500 phono preamp. I thought the Project a little bit better a little bit bigger presentation, and a little bit more oomph on the bottom. If I had one marginal nitpick, it was, I wish the A10's internal phono preamp was a little bit better, a little bit more dynamic. I'm gonna do some more listening tonight. This video won't go out for a few days, so if I change my mind, I'll change the video. But the internal DAC 
Sounds great. Hook up a really good DAC to it, it's gonna sound even greater. Hook a better phono stage up to it, it's gonna sound even greater still. There was no bloat in the sound. Everything, I think there is a flavor it's putting on it and it's kind of like a vintage 70s vibe flavor. A little bit more action going on down, down south of town in the bass section. Vocals clear, clean. Like a Marantz receiver can kind of warm things up in the mid-range. I didn't feel like this was warming things up in the mid-range. This reminds me of like a Pioneer. I had a fairly decent Pioneer. Sounded very similar to that. It was a vintage 70s era. Anyway, this reminds me of that sound except being a little bit cleaner. And it should be cleaner, right? This is brand new. That thing was 46 years old. <laughs> The takeaway here is this is probably the best, this is the best integrated amp I've heard. I'm sure you are getting so sick of hearing me because I'm always saying this is the best, this is the best. It's $2,500, okay? It should be the best integrated amp I've ever heard because I've never heard an integrated amp close to the, actually I take that back. I have heard the Bucard integrated amp. It wouldn't do very well in a competition with the A10 Classic. The boot card's pretty, this one's pretty, and has skills. So sonically spectacular. Brilliant, clean, highs, large soundstage, really large soundstage. Excellent instrument separation. I was listening to a bunch of Elton John this afternoon doing stuff. So I'm working on The Office and I'm just like, whoa, because it was just such a big, Soundstage, stuff was just getting thrown out my door. Lively, punchy, dynamic, fun, neutral-ish in the mid-range and top end, nothing harsh. Personally for me, this is the sound that I like. And that's probably why I couldn't stop listening to it. I was gonna leave it upstairs, but I got involved with reorganization and purging the great purge of 2024 in the Cheap Audio Man Studio. I got involved with that and I wanted to listen to it down here. So I brought it down here, hooked it up to a couple more speakers and just listened to it for most of the day. And at $2,500, this is going to be out of range for most people financially. Totally get that. But for the few folks that are out there that maybe are looking at getting something higher end, like some of those Yamahas with the meters, A10 Classic, internal DAC. Those Yamahas are just analog. With the sub outs and there's bass management, you can actually control the crossovers on your subwoofers. So you got bass management. You can use the A10 Classic as a preamp if you ever wanna add a little bit more beef on the bottom. I don't particularly know why, because it already sounds awesome and drove everything that I had. Point being is if you're comparing it to a Macintosh integrated amp, to a higher end Yamaha, this thing's a deal and cheap is relative. You could get a cheap jet that's on sale, right? So it's all relative. No, I have not heard a higher end Yamaha. I have also not heard a Macintosh integrated amp that is current. So I have no idea how this compares. What I will say is I've listened to a lot of amplifiers. I've listened to a lot of separates that come in actually more expensive than the A10 Classic. It could be all in my head, but I enjoyed every minute of listening to the A10 Classic. It's not perfect sonically, but it's perfect for me. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio, man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord group, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Those will be affiliate links, except for the advanced parents, Paris eight, except for the, except for the Advanced Paris A10 Classic. That is not an affiliate link. If you got any value out of this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Also down at the bottom of the video next to the share button, there's a thanks button. If you wanna buy me a cup of coffee, you can leave a little money in the tip jar. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your A10 Classic from Advanced Paris and fill your soul with happiness because I know it has filled mine with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man, except for today.